What's going on? Thanks for checking in. Hey, today I have the boys coming through. Ryan Barucki's doing a little throwing routine for you. He's left-handed flamethrower for the Toronto Blue Jays. So make sure you stay tuned. Check this progression out. All right, brother. Hit the gym. What are we doing first? Hit the field? So basically, I just like, obviously, I like foam rolling. Um, I foam roll probably. <laughs> on a standard day, probably about 20, like 15, 20 minutes, just kind of go through, just not just foam roll, but just like lacrosse ball, um, the peanut, everything, as you can see all right there, it's all the kind of the products I like using, bigger balls for my chest, like pec area, and then the lacrosse ball gets the smaller, smaller shoulder spots, my elbow, tricep, things like that, and then the peanut just kind of gets my spine all ready to go, that thing vibrates too, so it's nice. So I go about 20 minutes, right before anything. I can't really move without rolling out or anything like that. What about when you get to the field, like um, spring training, do you do like any heat cold tub before or anything like that? So for me, I'm not really a big cold tub, hot tub guy. I, the trainers like me every once in a while if I really need it, because I've had a couple elbow surgeries. So if it's feeling a little cranky, I'll put it in the hot tub before I start. But um, really, I just go right when I get to the field. I usually go right to the weight room, grab a foam roll, just start foam rolling. I usually foam roll like on a game day, probably like two, three times a day. Like I'll go right when I get there, maybe right before, like if it's pregame, probably right before I eat, and then obviously when I go through my pregame routine. Um, this off season, like the last couple off season, I've really been doing a lot more T spine stuff and like hip things, yeah, like hip mobility, things like that. But. Um, just kind of working. The older I'm getting, I mean, I'm 28 years old, but the older it's, I'm not a spring chicken anymore. When I was 20, 21, I could just do a couple of these and then just get going and throwing. But maybe that's the reason why I've had three arm surgeries. So, left-handed flamethrower. Yeah, no, that's the reason because you yeah, throw so damn hard. That's the reason. Learning this from the method. <laughs> getting ramped up, baby. Ramped up. That's the key. I would, I would like to get, it's nice now because it's hot, but I'd like to usually get before I start throwing, like at least have a little sweat going. Because, no, cold, no good. Like dynamic warm up? Yeah, just kind of like moving around. Usually when I get outside, like if I'm, like during a game day, like if when we go play catch, I'm usually running around, kind of trying to get in the sweat. Like I go through my plyo ball routine, that helps, and then I just kind of run, try to get a little bit of movement. Yeah. Get my heart rate up a little bit because. I don't know, it just doesn't do well if you don't. Yeah, you gotta increase your core temperature, man. You gotta get that core temperature. Seriously, raise temperature, ramp, yeah, man. You gotta get that core temperature going. Yeah. It's easy down here in Florida. I don't know about in, in Toronto, but. <laughs> well, Buffalo, wherever you guys are playing. Buffalo. If Buffalo. you guys are playing. But that's like the big thing, man. Like, especially being a bullpen guy, it's like tough because at any moment you can get, you can get ready to go. Like they can call your name and you gotta be ready, so. You kind of have to read the game when it comes to things like that. If there's a moment where you think you might get going, you might have to get ready right away. And then if you don't, you just kind of sit down. But you got to, especially when it's cold out, it's, yeah. you got to try to get as prepared as you can. Because when you're, when you've been sitting there for six, seven innings, it's not very, it's not an easy thing to do if your name gets called to get warm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so when they're like, hey, get hot, you start getting hot. And then they say, hey, sit back down. Do you like start back up where you like were? Or do you kind of so, redo the process? So say like we're in the fifth inning, right? And yeah. like starters at 90 pitches. And for me, I face a lot of lefties. So if, um, if I know lefties are coming up, I start like warming up, like start not like warming up throwing, but I start moving around, like doing my T-spine stuff, doing rolling out. Because usually all the bullpens have like all this kind of stuff in it. Yeah. Do bands, do all that stuff, get myself warmed up and kind of get a sweat going. Yeah. And then say like two hitters later, the phone rings. I sit there and if they call somebody else, I'm like, okay, I'll chill for right now because he's going. But still they could call down again and be like, actually, Barucky, get up. And then I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm ready. And then I get on the mound. But obviously but, you have an idea, hey, I'm probably to pitching today. Yeah. Like yeah. you have, yeah, 100%. Yeah. For sure. They, they have to do what? Well. We do, we do a good, uh, like our pitching coaches do a really good job of like, like if you, like obviously if you haven't thrown it in like a couple of days, like you're always up. Yeah. But like say you threw the day before, like yeah. you threw 25, 30 pitches. Like he'll tell you, he'll like ask, he'll come up to you while you're playing catch pregame and be like, hey man, how you feeling? But I'm feeling pretty good. This, that, he's like, all right, we're going to give you a day, like just kind of relax. 
or it'd be like, hey, if we need you, like you might be up, but we're gonna try to stay away from you. So they, they do a really good job communicating and letting us know, like, I don't know how, if that's with all organizations, but they really do a really good job with all of us, like letting us know, hey, you're up today. It's basically a green, green, yellow, and red. Like if you have green next to your name, you are ready to go at all times. If you have yellow, it kind of means you're going to be like, if we have to use you, yeah. we'll use you. And then if you have red, Nothing. you will not throw. Good. You will, the position player will throw before you do. Yeah. So. Nice. Dude, in college, that, that was crazy. Biggest part about college, they would say, hey, freaking, I wasn't a pitcher, but summers get hot. You know, just anybody randomly get hot. There was no true process because you're not that deep, you know, on a college team. You guys have, you know, how many pitchers got a – how many pitchers you guys keep on, uh, like, travel and stuff? We have a, we have a 26-man roster. Um, you got five starters and then usually eight bullpen guys. So you kind of have to just – I mean, as the season goes on, you know your role. You know what I mean? Like – by the end of the year, you kind of know who your closer is. So they only really are getting ready end of the, end of the thing. For me, I kind of know I'm more of like a specialist when it comes to it. So I face a lot. I always come in when I'm facing, when lefties are coming up. Like if there's two lefties, like like say the inning's coming up and it's left, right, left, I'll be more like probably, get, unless we're thin, I'll be more apt to go in in those moments. So those are like kind of the stuff, but you got like your late inning guys, leverage guys. They just kind of you just kind of know how it goes, yeah. but but it just all depends, man. Because anything can happen in the game. Say if a line drive gets hit back and it hits our dude in the shin, yeah. it's like boom. I remember, I remember like second or first series of last year, first series of last year, uh, Rue, like our horse, he got hurt in the second inning or third inning. Like he did something to his glute, and then we had to cover like seven innings, and it was just kind of. Yeah. You're just like, all right, well, we got to get the job done. And then we actually finished the game. I think we let up like, we had six innings, like let up one hit, and we ended up winning. But it was oh, like, yeah. but like anything like that Boys can happen. Step up. Yeah. yeah, so. Hey, so after he does all the soft tissue work, you know, uh, mobilize a little bit, we're going to activate, go into a dynamic warm up. You know, I think every freaking big league guy should do some sort of um, dynamic warm up to raise the core temperature. Why? Because it just makes things work better. Your electromechanical delay when the brain tells the body to get moving. If you're revved up, your nervous system revved up, everything happens much more efficiently. I just did a dynamic warm up. Now Baruch is gonna go into his daily band routine. But coming up through high school, college, it's like, dude, I wish I got to see what Ryan Barucki's off season training looks like. So that's my ultimate goal, man. Just giving you an inside look at what I'm doing, training these guys and what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis because maybe it's going to help the little kids, high schoolers, college kids coming up through. We all have the same goal. Everybody wants to make it to the show. What better way to learn off guys already there? I mean, I do the same thing. Like, I'll be, if I'm scrolling through Instagram and stuff, I'll see stuff that I like. Like, I've sent you stuff before, and I'm like, well, this looks pretty cool. Maybe I implement it. And you're just like, because I like it because I'm not like a cookie cutter guy, right? Like I feel like there's different ways to get stuff done. And that's why I like working with you because you're like adaptive, like you adapt to whatever. Like if I say, hey, I don't like, I don't like the way this feels, you have something else for me right away, so. It means the world to me, man. Yeah, bro. It means the world to me. Some guys are really good at bands and they know what, I just kind of do stuff that I know works for me and gets me loose, so. Keisha, what's your pre-throw routine? Man, get the park. You know, have a shower, get the shit on, grab a ball and get her going. Yeah. That's it right there. That's it. <laughs> Casers is that old school. That old school fella. Kenny Powers. It's a lot of fucking stuff right there that I, I don't use, don't. No. <laughs> what works for others works, you know? He just said it. All right, after the bands, get right into a plyo ball routine. What's um those ply balls have laces on them? Huh? Are yeah, they? so these are these are the Marv balls, and actually Sanchez, Aaron Sanchez got me on them. I mean, for me, I'm a two seam guy, so it actually I like the feeling of having something to hold instead of the normal ply ball. So I just got them. I love them. Um, obviously, we got this big old boy from Driveline, but that one I only do really here. I just do kind of ten, 
like 10 to 12 throws each kind of exercise. I'm not, I'm really new to the plows. This is my first off season really doing them. I just like them just trying to get loose. And I just want to have a couple feels when it comes to just getting my arm working. And it's not really, I'm not like going all out like some guys do, but I just like getting them warm up and throwing something before I actually get a ball in my hand and start whipping them. Especially in the bullpen, these will come in handy because you don't want to just always be chucking, you know what I mean? So just to keep you warm and set in certain situations, especially when it's cold, so. These balls, I like the laces, so I just hold them on the two laces because that's how I throw my heater, so that's a big one. I'm a big plow ball guy, I love them. People were against them, but it's like, here's the most simple argument for it. People are like, weighted balls are bad for you. You know a five ounce baseball is a weighted ball? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Quarterbacks are throwing heavy footballs, like, come on now. Yeah, when I was in high school, we did, um, I did something, this was 2012, before plow balls was really in, and I actually started doing it. I was, 150 pounds, like didn't have anything. Yeah. Just whippy, but I mean, for velo purposes, it, it helped me a lot when I was in high school because it just built up strength that I never, because I wasn't into lifting. I didn't really lift very much in high school. Yeah. So it was just one of those things where I think just the little things helped. And I wouldn't say it was just because of this, it had a lot to do with it, but I went from my junior year throwing 81, 82 to 93, 94. So. Yeah. A lot of things went into it, but. So during a lockout right now, what's your process? How many bullpens per week? My last four weeks, I've been throwing two heavy ones, around 25 to 35, 40 pitches, just depending. I think this week, one week, one time I'm gonna throw like a 20 pitch, have a plan, I'm gonna work on my slider, okay. or throw my change up, and then treat my Friday bullpen as like game day, where oh. I wanna kinda, simulate like me pitching like maybe throw 15 like i'm warming up eight to warm up before the game and then face like three four hitters simulated hitters so okay. try to get as game like as i can because obviously i just don't want to get into a situation where i've thrown five or six live bps and we're still going and we're still like trying to figure out stuff and i don't want to waste my bullets in april when yeah. in september when i'm grinding my arm's like just tired and my body's just beat up. I don't want to have to regret like me throwing five, six bullpen or th five, six live BPs in April when it doesn't really matter. All right, hey, Barucky's done with his warm up, ramping up. Now we're going to go outside, get into his throwing. This is pre bullpen. Got a high intensity bullpen tomorrow. Low uh, intensity. Low, low intensity. intensity. My yeah. bad, low intensity. So what are we going to be doing today then? Like, how far are you going out? Probably like 90. Um, Something I started doing at the end of the year, um, I'm wearing like tennis shoes because I want to kind of not throw as hard. Like, because when I'm in spikes, I feel like you can really, there's days where you maybe need to lean back, like, like but you feel so good, you want to start throwing. Yeah. So I feel like the tennis shoe thing, kind of started doing it at the end of the year, um, where it's like, you can't really get a good, as much drive and like traction with it. Yeah. So it kind of keeps you from throwing super, super hard. So, I don't okay. know, it's just a little thing. Down yeah, there. a little bit, a little bit, so. Because there's going to be times at bullpen, you like, you get up like two days in a row, three days in a row, and you've thrown like 60 pitches in the bullpen that don't matter. It's just getting loose, but but your arm, your arm thinks they matter. But, so you kind of have to pick and choose your battles. So it's like, like me, like me and Case, we've been in the bullpen and it's like, you get hot and you don't go in throwing 30 pitches you might have to take a break on not throwing as hard and catch play i get past 90 i start moving my feet like kind of a crow hop um uh -oh. just kind of just want to get my momentum going try to work through it and then as i come bringing it in that's when i start throwing like change ups and <laughs> sliders things like that the more pull downs i get and then i try to throw around 10 change ups every time every catch play at least and then try to throw the same amount of sliders yeah. so you kind of have to pick and choose your battles just see how you feel that day but 
change-ups for me doesn't really put too much stress on my arm, so I always try to throw those as much as I can. What do you do pre-game? Do you do like you're throwing your long toss, get that done first, so and you, then go sit back down? So usually um, you play catch around 3 o'clock, like when everyone plays catch. And then, um, and then yeah, you just really kind of sit there. Like I get, usually if we have a 7-10 seven, seven, start, I usually go into the weight room around 6, 6.15, and start rolling out, moving around a little bit, just kind of get, get my body warmed up. Go take a shower, get my jersey on, go head to the bullpen. The bullpen, it's just a crapshoot, you know, you never know. So just kind of read it and then you start moving around, do plyos, try to get some throws in, kind of move around, ramp up a little bit. I'll ramp every once, like every day, if I'm about to get on the mound. Um, but other than that, yeah, it's just, with the bullpen, the biggest thing, I was a starter when I first came up and it's easy because you have your five day routine, you know what you're doing. You know what you're doing, and so it's a lot different with the with the bullpen roll. Yeah. So. We were talking a little bit. You know, we've been talking about like your strength and conditioning schedule in season. You were saying you go two days a week, two full bodies. What? Um, like, how do you dictate that? Is it is it the same thing every week, or do you undulate that based on how you're feeling? Like, what what is it? Um, I for sure want to get one real heavy one in. And that's usually comes by just through like if I know I'm gonna be down the next day yeah I'll either lift that night just seeing how I feel yeah if I'm gassed I won't um, but the next day okay. I'll like lift heavy and when it comes to like heavy I'm not talking about like crazy weights like you're doing the off season right but yeah. just okay. something to keep that power and keep it going yeah, um, yeah. cutter um, but with that like and then my second lift usually is like kind of like a neural right. and that's like if I'm gonna throw like the next day I'll okay. usually neural like if I know I'm hot like yeah. I've been pitched in three days and we're facing the Rays and they have a lot of lefties lot. like I'm most likely gonna throw okay. so I'll neural and that's more of just like get the nervous system going doing some kettlebell swings TRX rows a little squat like kettlebell squats stuff like that like little not crazy but, but yeah, so yeah. things like that. That's important what he was just talking about, um, how he wants to lift on the same day that he does like his high intensity throwing. Oftentimes guys get in a habit of going high intensity throwing and then lift two days after. Yeah. You wanna make sure you're keeping your high days high and your low days low for recovery purposes. Yeah. The nervous system doesn't care what you throw at it, right? You can do a heavy back squat one day and a heavy throwing, like a, a game reps the other day. The nervous system really can't tell a difference. So that where why you got to make sure, hey, I threw today, I threw three innings, high intensity, 100 miles an hour. If I have time, maybe I should go get my heavy lift. So that day, that 24 hours, you're on high. So the next days you can back off and start the recovery process. You don't want to keep kickstarting that recovery process the whole way throughout the week because you'll never get a chance to recover. Yeah, that's perfect because I will lift like after I if I throw like a lot and I know I'm going to be down the next day, I'll like lift that last day because that next day I like sometimes don't play catch. I don't do anything. I like kind of just take a mental day where I don't even think about baseball. Like I'm there, like obviously like to do my work and like be a good teammate. But if I know I'm not pitching, I'm just like kind of just zen because okay. you play 162 man it's a long season so right. it's like when it comes to it, you got to try to take as many days off of throwing as you can right, you know what right. i mean because say you take a day off of throwing during after every say after every day like you pitch that's 30 40 extra off days your arm is getting right. instead of like constantly just throwing throwing throwing, throwing you know right. so but yeah i'm just about to finish with a flat ground usually 10 12 pitches and that's basically it Thanks for tuning in. Listen, if you want to use some of the same training protocols that I use with these big leaguers in here, 
I offer multiple training programs. I have Elite Exit Velocity, I have my in-season grind program, and I also have my throwing protocol Velo Code. Also, I'm accepting only two more clients for this March for one-on-one -on -one remote programming. Make sure you shoot me a DM on Instagram, say feed the trees, and I'll get back to you. I appreciate you, catch you next week. This is the game, man. Game rewards the grind, it knows how much you invest